Keep coming. Okay. Up a little. Flatten it out. Okay. Go down. Yeah, that was quite loud. All right. yeah. Cool. Okay, it can come my way just a tad. Beautiful. Okay, go ahead and push it my way. Okay. All right, so I got all the drip edge on. Normally you'd wanna put your drip edge under uh, your ice and water or whatever you have on your roof. But we didn't do it in this case because one, it's a barn. Two, we were being kinda lazy and uh, three, it's gonna be a metal roof where it's gonna be a continuous piece that goes all the way down and folds over the edge of the drip edge. There's really no way water can get behind there unless uh, something weird happens. So just uh, take that for what it's worth. So now we're ready to put on the rake. If you don't like it, keep your comments to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now I'm gonna draw the outline of the drip edge on the rake. Good. Yeah, right there, probably. Now I just leave this one piece under here on the front. And when you slide the two together, it kind of held them together. You're talking about that? Yeah. Okay. Slides in there like a little tongue. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. And good when you just cut square and it slides under there. Probably take the ridge cap and bend it right over the end. Yeah, that's what I always see everybody do. 42 and three quarters. 18 foot, one inch. Well, don't, don't hit it yet. All right, go ahead. 
Shear it off. And that's all there is to it. All right, so we have our rake on and we're getting ready to put on our first piece. So we're going to put it up there, uh, secure one end, and then measure across to the other end and make sure that they're both the same in the top and the bottom so that we got it going at a perfect 90 degrees. foot seven and a half forty foot six and seven eighths so seven and a half six and seven eighths so about five eighths this building isn't square at all I won't believe it works at So then the panel just kind of clicks in there and locks together. Look good? Take it from the bottom and you give it a push up and then that bottom part that you bent around kind of hooks in the bottom of the drip edge to prevent any uplift. Leave a quarter inch at the bottom for expansion. Then when you come up here and you try to pull up, that's clicked together. It's not coming apart. See right there that groove? and that kind of hold it together. 
up here where, where we ran the shear, it's not really a good representative sample. Then you want to put a clip about every 16 to 24 inches apart. 16 inches on the ends and towards the eave and towards the ridge. Then probably 24 on center uh, and the rest of the roof somewhere in the middle. Almost done, two pieces to go. 11 and seven eighths. it's early in the morning and here's the side that I got done it's looking pretty good I'm not gonna walk over there now because it's all wet and if I did I would fall right off the edge of the roof when metal gets wet you definitely don't want to be walking on it now we're gonna work on the big side today we got some trim to put up we got to put up the drip edge in the rake before we can put any panels down speaking of panels I thought I'd talk a little bit about the panel profile that I'm using and the panel profile I'm using is an SS450 SL. It has an inch and a half tall seam and it clicks together. So this seam will click over the top of this seam and this ridge down there will catch on this little indentation right here and they'll just interlock together. And this side is held down to the roof with a clip. What the clip does is it allows the metal to expand and contract like so on the roof. So when you have a really hot day, the metal is going to want to expand more and when you have a cold day it's going to want to shrink up and this prevents oil canning because it's allowing the roof to move naturally also these clips have a much higher wind uplift rating meaning if you get a very high wind it's going to take a lot more to pull a panel out that's being held down by these clips than it would be if you have a panel with just the nail flange and that's because you're using two screws per clip 
the clip is a much heavier gauge than the metal and uh, it's holding a much larger surface area, kind of like a washer, and the head of the screw can't pull through the clip. Unlike the nail flange, if you work it enough, the actual head of the screw will pop right through the nail flange. There's nothing wrong with nail flange metal roofs, it's just this is a superior system. So when it's on the roof like this and you got your clip fastened, the metal is just going to be able to slide up and down a little bit. It's just, it always has a little bit of play. However, when you try to pull up, it's not going anywhere. All right, so we're getting ready to put on the panels and we already got the first panel up and we measured across uh, to make sure that it was same and the panel was square so that when we get over here, we don't get a crooked panel. So we're good to go there. And we kind of rigged up this, this plank so that we can walk the long panels over from over there and kind of feed them up the plank and then I carry them up the roof and then put them on that, that uh, two by six that I have on the roof so they don't slide off. Once we accumulate enough to fill that bore, then we'll go up and we'll put on whatever is on that board on there and then just kind of move down the roof. And so far it's worked. All right, 29 more to go. Yeah, I know.
nip that a little. Nip that. Thing. All right, so the metal roof's all done and it took us about two weekends to knock out. If you have any questions about the process or anything that we did, go ahead and drop me a comment below. Also, if you have any suggestions about anything that we could have done better, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.